Hi, my name is Isaac and this is my 2006 Toyota Tundra truck and this is my little overland build that I've kind of geared towards winter camping because it be cold outside. Uh, the reason I like the Toyota uh, the 2006 first gen Tundras is because it's technically a full-size truck and but it's not like massive and gigantic like normal full-size trucks so it's kind of a a really cool size it's not too big to kind of daily and, and, and whip around and the motors that were specifically in the 2005 and 2006 are like the most one of the most reliable motors that Toyota has ever put out uh, when I got this truck I knew that I wanted something that I could have for the rest of my life you see a lot of these older guys who have the same old Toyota truck that they bought off the lot and they're had it for over 30 years and they're still ripping it. And I kind of wanted something that I could grow with and get older with and kind of have forever. So that's why I picked this truck specifically. And, and it's four wheel drive, right? I always wanted a four wheel drive. Uh, we love getting out and camping and exploring. And that was kind of a big factor for me. So the size, the four doors, the motor, it's just a classic. I do have a one and a half year old daughter. So having the four doors and like being able to put a car seat in the back was a big deal. And then when she gets a little bit older, I'm really looking forward to being able to take her camping as well. The truck is pretty much stock. There are some upgrades and I'm not really sure how far I really want to mod the truck because it's such a great reliable truck. Right out the gate, I don't want to start messing with that too much, but we do have a uh, Bilsting 5100s all the way around on all four corners and it's been adjusted so it's leveled. So when these trucks are factory, they, they basically have a little bit of rake so that they can take some payload and kind of kind of level out right so they kind of sit like this and this has been adjusted so it's leveled out and it's so the front end is lifted about an inch and a half up to level the truck so i guess the truck's been lifted about an inch and a half and the bill scene 5100s are a great great product like we were out here ripping on these gravel roads and off-roading a bit and it was it was really great and then we have so we have the bill scene 5100s and then we also have these Nomad wheels. These are 17 inches, which is which come stock on the truck. I wanted to give it a little bit of a different, you know, I don't know, give it give it a little vibe, right? And then we've got the BF Goodrich KO2s, which I've been running these tires for years and years and years, and I'm so impressed with these tires. I remember when I first heard about these things, I had a buddy tell me that he's never had to put chains on and he's a professional snowboarder and that's when i got turned on to him started using them and like pff, they're great these are a 265 70 17 which comes stock on the truck is a 265 65 17 so it's about an inch bigger overall and it turns into about a 31 inch tire which is great i'm not rock crawling we're just, we're camping, we're getting to remote destinations. I don't think I'm gonna go bigger, but as time goes on, we'll see. And I think it's a great size. It doesn't rub at all with the leveling kit. Like I have no problems, no rubbing. It's great. And uh, I like the way it sits and looks and I can get in the truck fairly easily. I'm kind of short, <laughs> you know, it's not crazy, crazy tall or lifted and uh, we'll, we'll zip around to the back and we'll talk about that too. So I was looking for a very specific truck. I was, I was looking for a 2006 white double cab four wheel drive specifically. And that's what this is. This is the last year they made the first gen Tundra. I was looking for this very, very specifically. And this was actually a California car its whole life. And it only had two owners whole life before me and the reason I jumped on it was because it was actually set up for a four-wheel camper and a heavier payload already so it had it has Firestone airbags in the back and then it's got turnbuckles the beds already been line X it's already been wired for 
DC to DC charging. When I seen this thing hit the market, because I wasn't quite ready to buy yet, it had all of the boxes checked of exactly what I wanted, plus everything I was planning on doing anyways, which was potentially getting a four-wheel camper or a heavier, kind of more livable long-term setup in the back. And I'll talk more about like my backstory later. But basically it's set up for a heavier camper than this shell, but the shell is working great for now and it's light. But yeah, so Firestone airbags in the back, kind of cool. This is an SR5 model, which means it has the cloth seats, which I wanted. I didn't want to have leather or more weight with accessories that I didn't necessarily want or need. I'm trying to keep the truck on the lighter side so that I can help with fuel and put that extra weight in the camper. One of the other things I really love about this truck is it is a V8. Imagine, so I know everybody's pretty used to seeing like the newer Tacomas, like they're super, super popular. Uh, this is like the size of a newer Toyota Tacoma, but with a V8, <laughs> which is awesome uh, for, you know, towing stuff and doing, doing stuff like that and truck stuff. So V8, if you don't know much about these trucks, I love it. I don't know if you can tell, but it's got a V8 in there. All right. So the, uh, the camper portion of the truck is actually this just Lear truck shell back here, right? And I think these things are super slept on in like the Overland community. They're light. They got pretty cool options. You get a carpet kit, you can get LED lights in there. You, know, you can get it key, wired to your fob so it'll lock. They're actually really super cool. And then I've got gear tracks up there so I could uh, mount stuff. And then I've got tracks on the, or I got rails on the side so I could put weight up. I could put all kinds of stuff up there. It's got all kinds of track systems going on. But anyways, they're, they're super duper light. And the thing about a rooftop tent is it's a tent. We're out here in the middle of the desert where wind is gnarly. And like having a fiberglass enclosed little enclosure is real nice. And I think these things are cheaper than a lot of rooftop tents, to be honest. Uh, I think these things are super slept on. The cool thing about this bed is it's a six and a half foot bed too. So like, you know, if you're super tall, it's not going to work out. But I'm only five, six and I can sleep in the back of here. No problem. And I've got a fiberglass shelter versus a tent. I've seen some people put uh, rooftop tents on top and then just use the bottom for gear storage which is cool too, right? But we're out here in winter with wind and like I didn't want to do the tent thing. Also, so this, I didn't buy this new. I found this shell off of Facebook Marketplace, traded the guy something I just had laying around and got this really rad little light camper shell and I can use it as a truck and it covers my cargo. It's a sweet deal. So I, I will tell you this, if you're thinking about trying to get an inexpensive like little shell camper for your truck, Lear, if you're gonna buy one new, Lear makes one where the windows fold out and open, right? This one, the window only cracks to vent. Like if I was gonna go get a shell to be my like full-time camper rig, I would 100% spend the extra money get one new where the windows open up so I could get to my cargo. The reason I'm telling you that is I, I did have this in the summer, like right before it turned into winter and it got hot in there because there's really not a lot of airflow that can come in and out. And like, if you could open that up and get the air to pass through, it would make a night and day difference. Also being able to get to your gear through the side would be amazing. So that's like my experience with the shell. I love it, but if I was gonna keep this thing forever and use it as my like part-time camper or, or live in it, I would 100% get the windows that fold up. So that's my experience with the Lear. I kind of love it, to be honest. <laughs> and like, if you're balling on a budget like me, I'm not rich and you wanna get out and camp and explore and you want something amazing, this is this, like about the it's probably about the price of a rooftop tent and i think it's a way better situation let's go into the back of the truck bed and i'll show you the little camping setup we got that i've been living in for like a week now so let's go check it out all right 
Welcome to my truck bed home. Ha! It's uh, it's not ideal, but it works. So I can almost sit straight up in the middle, but it kind of curves. So it's like you get back over here, it's pretty gnarly. <laughs> but you know, it's all right. The bed, we'll start with the bed. This is an REI Trail Gator 25. So it's about 25 inches wide. And it's really cool because it just comes out of the bag and you can adjust the legs. So you can lift the bed up, lift the bed down if you want to put storage in it. I mean, it's not necessarily the most comfortable thing in the world, but it works. Honestly, they discontinued this, but for any car campers or truck bed campers, like this thing is legit if you can find one. They also make one that's 40 inches wide if you got a couple. But I didn't necessarily want to build anything and I wanted everything to put I put in here to be able to take out so I could still use my truck as a truck. So this little bed system, pretty legit. And then I got a little bit of storage underneath there. Got my camping chair, some shoes, my dirty clothes and whatever else gets tossed under there. So that's kind of nice instead of just having something on the bed gives you a little bit of storage underneath to kind of chuck some stuff. And then this is my Kelty sleeping bag, which uh, I think it's a zero degree, but we got down to like 27 last night and uh, it was cold. So there's that. <laughs> got a pillow. Uh, I guess we'll talk about insulation and stuff like that. We do have Reflectix on a lot of the glass. So I have the windows cracked a little bit, vented, so I'm not just stuck in here with air not moving on both sides so it can pass through. And we have this Reflectix on, because it's all glass on the side and glass above you. I didn't do that one because I ran out of Reflectix. But honestly, it did a pretty good job. My heat source is this buddy heater. And honestly, without that, I could have died. Uh, it works too good, honestly, for in here. So usually the way I do it is I'll turn the buddy heater on low, let it heat the space up, which heats up really quick because it's a small space. And then I'll get in my sleeping bag, put my beanie on and go to sleep. When it's really, really cold out, two, three hours later, I'm gonna wake up because I'm freezing to death and then I'll kick it back on, heat the space back up, try and go back to sleep. Sometimes that works. I will admit that sometimes I sleep with that on, which is not what you're supposed to do. They say it's indoor safe, but still, but like last night, it was so cold I had to. And if you ever find yourself in that position, make sure you have airflow. Like I have each window vented on each side, so air is passing in and out. I would never sleep with that without that. And I don't feel comfortable sleeping with that even now, but I kind of had to. So it's a little buddy heater trick. That thing makes a world of difference. Over here, so I got my duffel bag and this is all my clean clothes. Yeah, it's just basically my dresser. And then when it's dirty, I huck it under the bed. And then when we go to the laundromat, I'll take care of that. So bam, look, my, my dresser, I can just throw it anywhere I want, right? Cool. <laughs> Over here, we got storage. I've got extra propane tanks and I uh, got a headlamp I was looking for a little later, <laughs> earlier for that headlamp. But just a little, just a little bin for, uh, you know, stuff. And then back here, we got power. So we got this big old Blue Eddy power station that like, lasts a super long time just charging phones and camera batteries and stuff like that it's really heavy so it kind of doesn't leave here unless it needs to and then i've got this tiny little jackery that i've had forever pretty much i just use to charge my phone and this is cool because like i can go out sit by the campfire charge my phone bring it in here charge it's just nice having power that I can just pick up and move around really easily. That big old power station is great, but it's not something you're going to move around easily. So I kind of call this the house system. And then I call this my uh, mobile power system. And then these lights. So I got a few different lighting situations. Got my bare bones lantern. It's my portable light. If I need to go outside and do anything, it's just rechargeable really cool got a vibe to it but then 
my house lights are these Lucy lights that are connected to this solar battery, right? So this is a, a little solar battery. And, and the cool thing is uh, these will all dis I can completely disconnect the lights from this, put it out in the sun and the sun will charge it. Or I could plug this battery system in to like the big battery in charge. Oh yeah, I have it plugged in right now. Oh, it's charging right now, look at that. So it's really, really cool for overlanding or camping. Like you can, you can just huck this out during the day because you're not typically going to be using your lights. Um, and then these will all wrap up in the unit and like it doesn't take a huge amount of space. And then it's got a few different settings. So that's on three settings all the way high and then off. And then you can click this, see where the battery's at, which is full, but it's charging. This thing is great. And honestly, at night, like right now we're in the middle of the day, at night when this is on its highest setting, it's pretty good. Like I have a lot of light in here. So I'm, I'm kind of hyped about that little light setup. Now you'll also see that I got this cargo net up here. Right now I'm just using it for lights. But I could, you know, throw my pillow up there. Or, oh boy, probably not. Pretty much right now, I'm just using it to hang my lights. So now, let's talk about the bathroom. I know everybody always wonders about that. Well, I pee in this Arrowhead bottle. <laughs> I don't poop in it, but I pee in it. I have a shovel if times get real tough and I need to poop out in the middle of the woods. But typically, I'm always able to kind of find find a place to poop like a Starbucks or a laundromat or a burrito joint or whatever so I'll do that most of the times and then if I really have to get the old shovel out you know what I'm saying I want to tell you about my portable fire you know I can obviously make a fire and chop wood right but this little thing is so nice this is called a ignic fire can which I'll put a link below to everything you're seeing here. If any of this stuff interests you, if it's still available, the bed ain't no more, that sucks. But anyways, the Ignic fire can is awesome, right? Cause like, obviously I have a fire on my tailgate right now. Um, and it's super cool in the morning. I can just huck the fire up here, kind of warm myself up. Uh, you can also put like a cast iron and like cook with it. Like it's super great. And then it's got this little container down here to hold your propane but it's like I can move this fire right now I can put it on the ground like it makes it to where I can have a campfire anytime anywhere and move it around you can't do that with a regular fire and you know it's small and compact and like it all kind of encloses into itself but it's it's really nice especially I don't have a lot of space I don't have a lot of storage and like, I don't really have, I'm not trying to really hang out in there. Like I'll go in there and sleep and that's about it. I'm outside most of the time. So I like having my portable fire pit where I can heat and cook and you know, it's nice. I wanna talk about security. Some of you guys might be thinking, well, what if some crazy person wants to roll up on you in the middle of the night, right? How are you gonna lock that thing? Well, the truck, Obviously as a fob, it locks the truck, right? The tailgate has a lock, so at, at, the, at the end of the night, I'll just turn it, lock it, so the tailgate's locked. And then this thing, when it comes down, um, it's gonna attach to these clasps, and I can just hit the switch right here, locks it. So somebody can't open it from the outside. And then when I wanna get out, I just pull these, pull these little cables, it releases from the class, I can get out and I can never get locked in. So I can lock the shell. Another reason the shell is so awesome over a rooftop tent. I don't know, I'm really impressed with the shell. I think more people should know about these. Uh, so I'll, I'm gonna touch on that real quick again. I would get the shell, if I was gonna make the shell my permanent little thing, I would get the windows that fold out. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, I would get the one that kind of bumps up and has a little taller, you know, because I, I, I know you guys seen earlier, like I can hardly sit up in there, like barely, and I'm 5'6". So they make the ones that are taller 
if this is going to be your full-time setup situation, I would get the one that's taller too. Little tip. I want to kind of talk to you about like my history and like where I came from in case you've never like seen my channel or any of my videos before. I actually started van life years and years and years and years ago in a Chevy G20 van and I fell in love with the lifestyle and exploring and adventuring and taking photos and like I just fell in love with the outdoor life and then I I wanted to be able to stand up that was a little low top cargo van cheap built it for nothing then I wanted something I could stand in I was looking at sprinter vans like everybody else and I ended up kind of falling in love with school buses and if you look back at my channel you're gonna see that's a huge part of my life I ended up building a bus I lived in it for years and I traveled all over the place taking photos and videos and and then I started a school bus conversion company where I built buses for and sold them all across the country and my point with saying all this is like I've kind of done it all like this is a really simple cheap minimalist build I started that way in the beginning and then I started building buses that were some of the most luxurious RVs on the market 12 volt ACs like everything you could ever imagine having I was putting in the buses and I've lived in buses for probably I don't know six years or more I don't even know a long time full time and I ended up buying a house for some other reasons and I realized that I don't need that much bus to just sit in my driveway and use once in a while and one of the other things that I realized was I really I like going outside and I like going to places like I'm not going to campgrounds and I like going to places that aren't typically easy to get to, right? And I wanted something four wheel drive. I bought a four wheel drive Jeep to put behind one of my buses and like it unlocked so much because I've never owned a four wheel drive before. Like I was rolling through two feet of snow, uh, unpaved roads, like it was nothing, just hitting the four wheel drive on the Jeep. I was driving through rivers and owning that four-wheel drive for a year like it was just supposed to be a little uh flat tow car behind my bus i realized like all the places that i wasn't able to get to in the buses because they just they're not really made for that and there is an argument which was kind of the idea like i would have the base camp in the bus and then i could take the four-wheel drive and go off and do i don't know but anyways when i bought the house and i wasn't living full-time anymore I wanted something that was reliable. I wanted something comfortable for my child because I have, you know, a baby girl in a car seat. And I wanted something that was really, really universal. And I started doing a bunch of research on a bunch of different rigs and like, I landed on this. I picked this truck specifically for a whole bunch of reasons. It's four wheel drive. It's not super, super long that I wouldn't want to daily drive it. It's got one of the most reliable motors that Toyota has ever made. Uh, I can get mechanic, like parts are everywhere. I, any mechanic can work on it. I can take it to any tire shop. Like I had a big commercial bus and it was two months to have anything done on it. Any mechanic work, any suspension work, because you got to book appointments with semi truck shops. So it's like, I don't know. I just went this way. And one of the other things I really, really liked, and obviously I've built buses professionally for years. I could have built a van and I almost did. But some of my other experiences that I want to share with you is like, I've spent so much time building. Like the last three years, I've been building. And that's all time I could have been out living and exploring, right? I've heard so many stories of people building their, their bus or their van and they're three years in, they've saved all this money and they're still building it out in their driveway, right? That's three years you could have been out living and adventuring and you'll never get that time back. So that was another reason I kind of went this route. Like I just wanted something 
I could slap together and go out and live my life. I don't want to spend another three months building something when I easily could have. Yeah. So I've kind of done it all. I've done the cheap builds. I've done the no builds. I've done the most luxurious builds you could ever imagine. And um, I don't know. What comes back to me is like it isn't necessarily how fancy your conversion is. Like somewhere along the lines on the internet, it was like everybody was just trying to build this perfect like Instagram rig. And it's like, that's not what this was about. Just getting out and living and exploring and living your life, creating memories. That's what it's about. So that's how we ended up here. I love this truck. Full disclosure, this shell isn't forever. I'm either going to build something like a little more nice after I just talked about building or I'm going to get like an overland, uh, like a pop up type camper or a, I don't know, or a Bigfoot 611 or something. Uh, but one of the things I'm going to maintain is experience. I want to get out and create and live more than I want to build in a shop bay. So I don't know when we'll get there, but it's kind of where we're headed eventually. But right now we got this sweet little setup that anybody who has no building experience at all could do and get out and live. So yeah, I love it. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this tour. Uh, just to recap, my name is Isaac and this is my 2006 Toyota Tundra double cab four-wheel drive simple overland build uh, we are going to get a little crazier probably with the camper setup in the future but like this is super simple and works great we're out here in below freezing in the desert and i'm out here and i'm alive so it's doable for anybody and uh, this is a nice rig because it's pretty pretty inexpensive relatively uh, but thank you so much for watching the video. If you got this far, I will have links in the description for all of the products uh, that I use in this build. If you know you wanted to try and find any of that stuff, hop in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this little setup. What would you do differently? Uh, also, consider subscribing. We're going to be doing a lot of camping and overlanding in the future on this channel. And I'm going to be sharing any info and things I learn along the way. So, again, peace out. This is Isaac signing out. I'll see you in another one. Peace.